diehard Democrat leaders and other political enemies of former President Trump might want to put him on trial, but most Americans just simply do not. Most don't care to even watch this stuff. According to a new Rasmussen poll, just 15 percent of likely voters, repeat, likely voters, plan to even watch the whole impeachment trial. Most did say they would check in from time to time, but 32 percent said they would not watch any of it. Only 31 percent thought that Trump would likely be convicted. Another 64 said a conviction was unlikely or definitely would not happen. Even a majority of the politically unaffiliated or independents, 54 percent, said Trump should not be convicted. Among Republicans, that number is 81 percent. And so much for President Biden's favorite word, unity. According to an earlier Rasmussen poll, 57 percent of likely voters said that just having this so-called trial will lead to even more division. Like Biden and the Democrats really care. Among Republicans, 83 percent feel that way, which is more than Trump's current base of support, according to the Washington Examiner. Now, this is in spite of the frenzy from the media who are completely off their collective rocker. They're trying desperately to whip up the Capitol Hill incident into a manifestation of widespread domestic terrorism within the Trump ranks. In particular, over at CNN, they're out of their minds. Got Anderson Cooper talking about Trump supporters otherizing people who aren't like them, even making comparisons to genocidal Hutus in Rwanda who called the Tutsis cockroaches before killing them. I'm not kidding. See for yourself. It's so easy to otherize people, to make people other than, other than American, other than patriotic, other than, than human, you know, and we've seen it in Bosnia, we've seen it in Rwanda, where radio was telling people that, you know, Hutus were telling the radio listeners that Tutsi were cockroaches, for, you know, to getting them ginned up for genocide. Um, and you see it in, in these videos where people who claim they are patriots are in the face of a police officer calling him, uh, you know, as we're seeing it right there. Does this guy own a mirror? Tucker Carlson mentioned this as well in the opening to his Wednesday show and also explained how wrong the media are getting the real story of how the Capitol riot got started. They've lied about how the casualties even occurred as well. Major unanswered questions remain even as the Senate tries Trump for inciting it. If the current mass hysteria were a square dance, some producer from CNN would be calling it. These people are psychotic. Ironically, the otherizing here is being done by Anderson Cooper. To him, we are the cockroaches. Trump's attorneys have gotten some bad reviews for their arguments on Tuesday, but they're actually last minute fill ins for his previous attorneys whose law firm was bullied into dropping Trump's case. You may recall that Jonathan Turley has expressed dismay at others in his profession who try to prevent the former president from exercising his right to legal representation. It's become difficult for President Trump to hire the caliber of attorneys that he really needs. John Hinderaker, the president of the Center for the American Experiment, spoke with Mark Stein on Fox News Wednesday evening about this, and he said it was the worst opening statement he's ever heard, and that he would have probably fired that guy in the quarter 10 minutes afterwards. Hinderaker did say that Trump has at times had some bad taste in lawyers, but that the real story is that major law firms and high profile lawyers don't dare represent Donald Trump. We've seen this over and over again. He's hired top notch law firms and they wind up having to put out a public statement saying, no, we don't represent Donald Trump. One firm after another, according to Hinderaker, a good friend of his, senior partner at a respected global firm, did a small amount of volunteer work for Trump after the election. Well, that news got out and the left launched a massive attack on her law firm and the law firm's clients. They were trying to put this huge, prestigious law firm totally out of business because one of the partners had committed a mortal sin. She decided that for the sake of her partner, she had no choice but to leave the firm. Even the governor of Michigan, Democrat Gretchen Whitmer, has tried to get the lawyers who represented Trump in that state disbarred. So according to Hinderaker, the two or three lawyers who are representing Trump now have been on the case for a week or less. He thought that the brief that they had prepared was not bad. The funny thing is that no matter how bad Trump's defense might be from the first day or so, his lawyer is going to win the case. 
Democrats just don't have the numbers to get a conviction. And they know it. But that wasn't the point. This whole thing has just been for show to keep our focus off the bonkers policies that they and Joe Biden are pushing through. Besides, they love hating Trump too much to stop just yet. I can imagine them watching the trial video over and over for the rest of their lives, remembering the good old days of Trump hate. Of course, that much hate has repercussions. In a stunning poll from Zogby Analytics, based on a sample of 873 likely voters from around the country, 46% believe civil war is likely, while 42% believe it isn't. Among Republicans, the split was 49% likely to 40% unlikely. 45% of Democrats believe it's likely, and among independents, 42% believe civil war is likely. All groups were somewhat split similarly. Now, there were some regional differences as well. Respondents in the East, well, they were much less likely to anticipate civil war than, say, those in the South. 49% yes, 39% no. That may be due to a higher diversity of thought amongst Southerners than people living on the East Coast. And people who live in large cities were much more likely to think that we'll have one of those in the suburbs. Obviously, all the pushing, lying, name-calling, tweet-censoring, statue-toppling, power-grabbing, and boot-heel-grinding by the left is having its effect. Indeed, they seem to be deliberately goading conservatives into striking back. That way, they'll have an excuse to crack down even more. I just pray no one is so foolish to take that bait. Hey, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed that video, please consider subscribing to the channel below and clicking the notification bell. Also, leave a like and a comment. And why don't you share this video as well if you really enjoyed it. And if you want more of my news analysis and commentary, you can sign up for my newsletter at MikeHuckabee.com. By the way, it's completely, I mean completely free. Well, that's it for this edition of The Breakdown. I'm Mike Huckabee.